Welcome to Jacuzzi Time with Mikey Jacuzzi. That's fucking right. I'm here and I'm alive and I'm doing well. Thank you very much. It's Saturday night. It's about 10.30. Just got back from my aunt's house. and Man, I, I tell you what. You know, spending time with family. It's like the greatest thing in the world. I, I mean, you know... I, not many, I don't know how many people know my family that, uh, that watch, that watch me on here, but, you know, it's like, I gotta tell you, come here, buddy, come here, <laughs> you know, it's like, tonight was so fucking special, so fucking special, it's like, everybody left at 8 o'clock tonight, and it's 10.30, and I'm just getting home, so, I was over at my aunt and uncle's until, you know, about five minutes ago, and it was me and them and my Uncle Don, and I want to tell you guys some stories that, you know, from back when I was a kid, you know, just because it means a lot, you know, we were talking about, like, back in 1985, when my uncle, um, his high school basketball team at Bishop Donahue won the uh, state championship in West Virginia, um, I was like nine and a half years old and I still remember that, that fucking championship game when they won and he ran up into the stands and he was talking to, you know, my grandmother and, and everybody else. And then he put me on his shoulders and, you know, went down onto the floor and I'll never, I'll never fucking forget that shit. It's like, you know, it's etched in my brain forever that. You know, my uncle that was, you know, 17 years old at the time, I was nine and a half, you know, put me on his shoulders and, and carried me around when he won the state championship. And, huh, it's just so many fucking special moments that I've had in my life, you know. Just, just fucking awesome. I, I you, you can never... You can never repeat something like that again, you know. It was not I was nine and a half years old. Fuck, so, well, it was what fucking thirty-one years ago almost. <laughs> you know, actually it was. It was thirty-one years ago, like last month. You know, when they won the state championship, and I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that. And you know, I, I know my uncle. He he might not even remember it as much. You know, but something I'll never fucking forget, so, just like special moments came out tonight, you know, we were talking about my grandpa, and my grandpa was one of the greatest men I've ever known in my life, and we were, you know, he was always into politics, and, you know, when, when I was younger at the Italian, Italian festival in Wheeling, I remember Gaston Caperton, the governor at the time, coming up, and I remember like being there with my grandpa and my and my aunt and my sister and and uh one of the one of the secret service guys was like telling me you know he's like you know we need your help you know we need we need you to look around and make sure that there's nobody suspicious and and stuff like that and fuck at the time i was I was probably like yeah, 14, 15 years old, and I just, I felt like I was, like, king of the world back then, you know, because, you know, my grandpa's friends with the governor, and here we are, you know, this festival and stuff, and his Secret Service guys are asking me for help, and that, you know, there's, there's things in my life that I'll never forget, you know, that, that happened to me, and, you know, just made me feel good about myself and who I was, and, you know, we started talking about when my grandpa lost his election, you know, and I remember that night so fucking vividly, you know. When he lost the election, me and him were taking signs down in Benwood, West Virginia, and I was bawling. Once they announced that my grandpa lost, I was fucking bawling my eyes out, and he was just... You know, he was, he was okay, and he was driving around, and we were picking up signs, and he, you know, he'd stop, and I'd get out, and, you know, we'd both pull the stakes and stuff like that, and, 
there was, you know, that one sign in, in Benwood that I remember the most that I was bawling. I was crying so hard. And, and my grandpa, you know, he just looked at me and he was like, Mike, everybody's got their time, you know, and, and he took it like a champ. <laughs> and, you know, it's like, God, this guy's so freaking awesome. I'll never forget that, you know, I'll never forget that in my life. Certain things that people say to you and certain moments that you have with somebody that you care about so much. And my grandpa was, he was my idol for so long because I just, I've, I always wanted to get into politics and, 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 and try to help people. And, you know, I, I never took that road. I, I decided to go a different route and, you know, making money was, was more important for me anyway. But it's like, man, what my grandpa did for people of West Virginia, for the city of McMacken, for the county of Marshall, and, you know, he was, a, he was a fucking great man. And one of the reasons why I moved back from South Carolina, you know, back in 2004, he, he had got diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease and, you know, that was, that was pretty tough. Plus my dad had had a, his first stroke back in 2001 and I was in South Carolina at the time. And, you know, my sisters just told me to stay where I was and let things happen. And, and I stayed and, you know, I came back a couple of times after that, you know, but you know, when my dad's health started declining and then my grandpa got diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's, you know, my sister, my youngest sister, my baby sister, Sharon, she, she called me up and she was like, Mike, you gotta move, you gotta move back home. And I still remember her and Ed coming down to the beach and this is, you know, before they had any kids. And, they took like half my shit with them when they left, <laughs> you know, and I was like, I'll find a way. And I did, I found a way and I moved back to, I moved to Canton, Ohio, which, you know, it was two and a half hours away from, from West Virginia, but it's like, I think back on my life. And I said I wasn't going to be negative, and I'm not. I'm not going to be negative at all about anything. I'm just telling you guys the, the real story about who I am and how I was raised, and you know why well, I've got the greatest family in this world because they've done so much for me. They've done so much for me. You know, and I miss my dad, my grandpa, my grandma, my grandmother, my aunt. I miss so many people in my life that were so close to me, you know. I'm crying tonight, and I'm not negative. I'm just, I'm crying happy tears because I'm remembering, like, the good things, you know. The good things about why my life happened the way it has, and you know, I, I know I'm going through a hard time right now, but damn, the the people that made me who I am, you know, that's those are the people that I have to thank the most. And you know, I've got stories that that not everybody's heard, you know, maybe a few people here and there, but. It's like, fuck, if I die tomorrow, I want everybody to know my whole story and and things I remember about my life and what really had meaning to me, you know, and there's a couple of stories I told just a second ago. It's like, it was really meant a lot to me, you know, my Aunt Etta, you know, it's, we used to go camping with, with her and, and my cousin Missy and you know my grandma my grandmother well my grandma we used to call her Giga <laughs> and you know we'd go camping 
all the time and like me and Missy and, and my sisters we would be like you know singing and, and dancing and making up songs and singing to you know meatloaf and <laughs> you know uh, it was long ago and it was far away it was so much better than yesterday I, I just I think about so many things that happened in my life that meant so fucking much you know and a lot of times I lose track of that and you know I sit here and I I fucking think about my life right now and it's like you know why why do things happen the way they do and you know why do why do tr people treat me the way they do that that don't know me and that don't know my family you know it's like if you haven't met my family then you don't really know me enough because there's so many great moments that I've had in my life and it was all because of my family you know this year is the year of the locusts and I don't really remember like 1998 or 99 when the locusts came out the last time because I was living in Wheeling at the time bartending and, and stuff like that and managing a um, beer and cigarette store but I remember 17 years before that when I was living on Birch Ridge in Proctor, West Virginia and you know those those locusts came out and just <laughs> fucking stormed everything <laughs> it was crazy you know when you're living in the country and and, and that happens it's it's not just like you don't want to fucking go outside because these things will fucking attack you <laughs> they won't really I mean they're fucking harmless but I remember you know when I was younger me and my dad just just fishing all the time and you know fuck when the locusts came out it was like godsend it was like we'll fucking catch anything with these bitches <laughs> you know we used to collect them and, and go fishing with them and stuff and god I, I, I've had so many awesome memories in my life you know that I just I you know, fuck, if I could write a book, if I could just tell my story, you know, and somebody would listen and and understand, you know, that some little fucking guy from Proctor, West Virginia growing up and not having a lot, but having the love and support of his family, you know, it's like, man, it's, it's definitely a story to tell. I mean, I, I've been, I've been through a lot in my life and even... You know, even after I grew up, it was like, you know, I gotta, I gotta do more, you know, I've gotta, I've gotta be the fucking man, you know, I gotta do whatever I can in life just to fucking prove everybody wrong that said, you know, this little guy from fucking West Virginia would never amount to anything or get to see everything that, that I have, you know, so I guess, you know. I guess I took it, I took it to a different level, obviously, you know, it was like, I don't know, I mean, growing up Catholic and going to Catholic schools and, you know, going to CCD and, and then Catholic high school and then a Jesuit college, it was like, I had a lot of faith in my life and I lost a lot of that when, you know when I got out into the working world and it was like, you know, fucking ruthless. You know, you work so many hours a fucking week just to survive and and then you go to church and people are like, here, give, give, give. And it's like, I'm just trying to fucking survive until tomorrow. So I guess, you know, that kind of turned me off of, of religion a lot. But, you know, talking with people in my life, it was like, you know, you don't, you don't really need, you don't really need to go to church, I don't think, I mean, people may have a different opinion for me, and that, that's fine, I understand that, but for me, it's like, as long as you pray, and as long as you have faith, and as long as you do whatever you can for somebody, and, and, and be the man that God teaches you to be, you know, that you'll be okay, and I know I lost a lot of that in the last couple of years and maybe that's why I'm going through the time that I am and 
you know, I, I, I pray that things work out and, you know, God, I hope they do because I don't ever want to be at that point where I feel like there's nothing left. But, you know, I, I do feel that. I do feel that a lot and that's why I'm honest and that's why I talk on here and it, like you know I don't want to be negative and stuff and even tonight I, I didn't I didn't want to have a negative post and I'm not really being negative I'm just telling you guys about stories that fucking mean so much to me you know that you know I think back on my life and it's like growing up in the family that I did it was like god you can't compete with that there's I mean You can't go through what I have in my life and and appreciate it until you've been there and you know I don't know it's 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 a strange thing that tonight just everything hit me and it was like you know what Mike you've lived a fucking wonderful life and you need to appreciate more and, and think about the past more and, and don't worry so much about tomorrow and where you're going because you've got the greatest people in the world backing you and you know I've lost a lot of people in my life you know I've lost a lot think about my dad so much the greatest guy that ever fucking walked this earth you know and and my aunt's listening to stories my mom was telling earlier that I'd never heard before. It was just fucking beautiful. It's like, it was like stuff I didn't know about my dad. And I miss him. I miss him a lot. I miss him so much. I miss my grandpa so much. But, it made me who I am. You know, I've lost a lot in my life, and maybe that's why I am how I am, you know? You know, I try to think about, you know, why am I the person that I am? And it's because of people that raised me and that were there for me all the time. You know, I, I never had a lot growing up, but I had enough. I had enough. I had enough to survive. I had enough to be thankful for. You know, and then once I got into this oil and gas industry eight years ago, it was like, you know, like, fuck, now I can finally do what I want to do, you know. I lost, I lost a lot in those years, you know, I did. You know, and a lot of it was because of the women that I found in my life that became a part of my life that I thought were the ones for me, you know, and it's like after talking to my aunt tonight, it's like, you know, if, if you don't give my family a chance, if you don't fucking really know them, then you'll never know me because I've got stories and I've got so much love from my family, you know, so much love. It fucking hurts so much. You know, because of the way I feel sometimes. You know, it's like I got the most wonderful family in the world that would do anything for me that they can. And I kind of got sucked up into a life that I probably should have never even been a part of, you know, the oil and gas industry where I'm making good money. And, you know, it was a blessing. It really was, you know, but. It's like, without having that right now, I don't know what to fucking do, you know. I'm like, I feel like I'm down to crunch time and yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm taking every day, just one day at a time. And, you know, if I can get through the next day and the next day and the next day, then that's a positive for me because the way my mind works especially after drinking it's like I don't fucking care about tomorrow you know but I I've had 
way too many tonight. I, I had more than a fucking 12 pack tonight <laughs> and I'm feeling good. I'm just like, God, that's talking about family and talking about the past and, and how awesome my, my life has been. Like, I got to share that, you know? So this is going to be a little bit longer post than I normally do, you know, but I just want you guys to know how important my family is to me. And, you know, when I do find the right person for me, you know, they have to want to be a part of that, you know? And I haven't, I haven't seen that lately, you know, I've chosen the wrong women for sure. Obviously, you know, that's why I'm still single now. You know, and I don't know. I don't even want to fucking talk about the fucking text message I got tonight. Because it's like, you know what? Why the fuck are you even texting me? You don't need to. I'm moving on. It's what you wanted. That's what you're getting. So. Anyway, I'm just, I, I'm... Looking forward to tomorrow. I was going to go to Undo's tomorrow, but, you know, talk with my uncle tonight. He's been mentoring, you know, one of his his good friends, son, sons, and really decent basketball player that's younger. And I'm going to go shoot basketball tomorrow and show this show this kid how, how to fucking play because I, I still got skills. I still got skills. I, I, I've shot basketball a few times in the last couple months and I still got it. So after all, we'll piss ass in basketball. <laughs> He'll be like, yep. Yeah. Uncle DK, he, he, uh, he was my mentor. I mean, I still remember when I was a kid, you know, he just, he took, he would drive me down in his Yugo. <laughs> he had a fucking Yugo, you know, way back in the day when Yugos were like popular <laughs> in the States. He used to take me down to Glendale and I still remember listening to fucking Bruce Springsteen, you know. We'd listen to Bruce Springsteen on the way down and I'll never forget those days, you know. We'd go down to Glendale and shoot basketball and he'd make me shoot, you know, hundreds of free throws and just he'd be there rebounding the ball and throwing it back to me and just let me fucking shoot you know and I still say that I'm, I'm better that you know I'm better than he was but you know he won a state championship when he was a kid you know, when he was in high school and I didn't you know I broke my wrist my senior year and you know I was averaging 18 and a half a game and broke my wrist and I came back for the playoffs and did really well, but we we lost in the regional championship game, and that was like probably one of the hardest hardest things I've ever been through because it was like I wanted to follow in my uncle's footsteps and win a state championship in basketball, and I wanted to go into college and play. And once I broke my wrist, I kind of fucking sealed the deal there. But even after that, it was like when I got to college and started playing at Wheeling Jesuit and intramurals and stuff. People tried to talk me into playing. And at the time, I just, I didn't feel, it was like, you know what, the coach never came up to me and, and said, hey, I want you to try out and stuff, or I probably would have, you know, but it was everybody else, you know, a couple guys on the team and a couple guys, you know, that were just in school there. And, you know, I just felt like if the coach didn't come up to me, then I wasn't worth it, you know. I should have went. I should have went and tried out because I'm still money when I shoot. I still believe that with all my heart. But you know, it was like I, I was. I had. I kind of had some pride, and I, I. I actually had the the coach of the of the track team. The coach of the track team came and talked to me, and a bunch of the you know cross country guys and stuff, and convinced me to to go out for uh for track when I was in college and. I started doing that, and then I blew out my fucking knee, and then it was like, I'm fucking done with this, because I just want to shoot basketball and go party, and, you know, so I, I didn't last too long there, you know, probably a month or two, I can't even remember, but I, I still remember, like, going out and running down to Wheeling Park, and 
you know, running as much as I could because I loved to run back then. I still would enjoy it now if the fucking weather would warm up. It's been nice the last couple of days, but I don't want to be like, okay, I'm going to start running again and then fucking snow tomorrow. <laughs> you know, fuck that bullshit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. It's like, uh, I don't know. It's like, with every post that I'm, I'm going to talk about from here on out, it's going to be about my life. And it's not going to be negative. It's not going to be about any fucking ex-girlfriend that, you know, doesn't mean anything anymore. It's going to be about me and, you know, my past and good things. You know, things that I remember. Because, you know, if I'm not around forever, I want somebody to be able to pull up a video and be like, I want to hear this story again about, about Mike's life. So... There you go. There's a couple stories for you. I hope you enjoy them. And sorry it's 25 minutes now, but I've been drinking a little bit tonight. And I just wanted to, you know, talk about that and talk about how awesome my family is. Because without them, I wouldn't be here today, you know. That's for sure. They made me who I am. So... If I ever do meet the one girl that I'm, I'm meant to be with, you know, just if you ever watch my videos before we actually get to meet, just know that, you know, you have to accept my family and be a part of them because that's who I am, you know. Definitely who I am. So, thank you guys so much for tuning in and, you know, I've had a great day. Today's been a wonderful day. I... Just went over my aunt's from 6.15 until 10.30 tonight and got drunk with my family. <laughs> you know, now it's like, you know, it's about 11 o'clock and I'm, I'm going to go to bed and wake up tomorrow about 10 and get ready and go shoot some basketball with my uncle and, you know, teach, teach Derek how to play basketball the real way. <laughs> so Derek, if you're ever fucking watching this shit, just remember... I'm calling it right now. I just whooped your ass in basketball. <laughs> and I'm fucking 40. Because <laughs> you can't stop me. You just can't. I'm money. When it comes to basketball, I'll beat anybody. Fucking Kobe, LeBron, fucking Michael Jordan. Um, I'm money when it comes to shooting basketball. I always believe that. <laughs> Maybe one cocky son of a bitch every once in a while, but you know what? I can back my shit up when it comes to being on the court. I might only be six foot tall, but I can definitely shoot. The rock is where I'm at. I can fucking shoot the rock. I got perfect form. Swish. So. For everybody out there that fucking discarded me because I broke my wrist in high school, you know what? Fuck you guys. <laughs> And you missed out on a great fucking basketball player. And a great person, too. I think I'm a pretty awesome person. I don't say that enough. I think I'm a piece of shit now, you know, just because of everything that happened in the last couple months that caused me to lose one person that I love. But, you know, it wasn't my fault. I tried. I tried enough. Even after I fucked up, I tried. And I'm finally coming to realize that, you know, that it wasn't my fault. You know, if somebody loves you enough, they're going to fucking make it work. You don't have to fucking work hard for them, you know. I did, and I always will work hard for whoever I'm, I'm chasing after. But I'm not going to sacrifice who I am and what I'm about to, you know. I know before I've said a few times that well, I'm not even going to talk about it anymore. Probably still wouldn't. So, I love you guys. And you know what? Thank you so much. I appreciate you tuning in. And uh, we'll catch you on the flip side. Sweet dreams. <laughs>